Yeah, that was a question. <laughs> to be good enough and more focused. <laughs> to be good enough and more focused. You're already good enough. So, okay. To be more focused. What else? Transform my mind. Transform your mind. That's always good. Learn, bring the Dharma to consciousness and share it. Can we tell these are people who have been coming a while? Any other reason? Because you were here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was part of my I missed you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the point of a spiritual practice? I think it's the benefit of others. This particular practice and all religious practices, I think, are like that. Um, and this one particularly emphasizes that, that if we want happiness, we want to develop happiness to benefit others, that that is the key. Benefiting others brings happiness. It is cause and effect. So, um, so learning how to benefit others is part of our effort, you know understanding and what prevents us what's one of our biggest obstacles to benefiting others self selfishness some selfishness but probably a better way to phrase that is we're caught up in our stuff mm -hmm. our problems mm -hmm. our suffering you know and that because we're so keyed into that all the time that we miss others. We kind of can be mindless to the needs of others. We don't, you know, we're helpful. I mean, most of us are helpful in general, but we just, you know, that, that focus on others is not primary. Our primary focus is taking care of ourselves and everything that we consider to be mine, like my family, my job, my stuff, my baby, my children, you know, that, that me and mine, what do I need to do to take care of me? in my circle of mind. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what gets, you know, so this, this feeling of not quite satisfied, you know, that uh, although we may feel good enough, most of us want it to be a little better. Some days we want it a lot better. <laughs> so it just depends on the level of our suffering at that moment. So. And so the Buddha said, funny thing, if we get out of our own way, if we would quit being so preoccupied with us, with this self, you know, that would clear the way for happiness. Because then we'd be more mindful of others, more considerate to others, try to benefit others more. We think less about ourselves and more about others. Any fears arise around that? Y'all are really nice people. <laughs> <laughs> no fears, just potential. Just, you know, let my stuff, my attention get to just getting outside of my head and out. Looking out. Looking out right away makes our, our view more spacious, you know. When we look within, it's this, you know, or just at ourselves and just at our family and just at our little world, it's very narrow. So looking out right away makes things feel more spacious. So that's good news. Anybody worried about what about me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> will I become invisible? I'll be dead. No one will notice me if I'm always focusing out. I'll die or something. Yeah, nobody will help me. Thank you. Very good work there. Please. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Our thoughts. Hey. So we've done a lot of talk in the past about how one, what kind of qualities we have that we want to develop further in order to be. Um, more mindful of others what are some of those generosity generosity is one compassion compassion patient. what is com patient what does compassion mean in this tradition oh no it's just why did you, <laughs> <laughs> you said it <laughs> the wish to remove no wish. the suffering 
that's great compassion. Regular old compassion is just a wish, you know, that someone wasn't suffering. Mm -hmm. Great compassion is when you're actually ready to step in and do something about it, you know, and we can't always do that. There are most instances we actually can't take someone's suffering, we, but we can help. We can make the conditions better, be a support, those kind of things. But it starts with compassion, that wish that somebody else wasn't suffering. What other things? So generosity, what does that do? Being generous. What are we generous with? Our time, our money, our possessions. Resources. Resources. For somebody uh, expecting nothing in return. And that's sort of a key about generosity, is trying to do it with no hope of reward. We start where we are, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but because according to the Buddha, any generosity brings resources, you know, even really selfish motivated generosity. It's still the cause for resources. But the best resources are when we just are generous with no thought to ourselves at all. What other kind of qualities? Humility, patience. Oh, we said patience earlier too. What's patience? I hate this definition of patience. Except, <laughs> except the situation as it is and don't um, lose the balance of peace in ourselves. Well, it's really the, the key is that beginning, accepting the suffering that you're experiencing without the wish to retaliate. It's acknowledging that we're suffering in that moment. It might be very slight kind of dissatisfaction, you know, or it might be tremendous. You know, but it's, it's being able to accept, okay, I'm not happy with the situation, but I have no wish to retaliate. I'm certainly not going to do anyone else harm. So it's a, you know, I had to work hard to get to that point, you know. So, although I don't wish people harm, but accepting the suffering that arises is <laughs> a little bit challenging. So you said something else? Humility. humility. What does humility do for us? It opens our minds to learn. It reminds us that we're not this individual. We are created by a lot of things that have come together. So it opens our mind to learning and equalizes us to the person that's talking or the person we're talking to so that we can be. Did you get all that? I don't even know what's accurate. <laughs> we don't know it all. Yeah, we don't know it all. Why is that helpful? Leaf said some of the things that make it helpful. Why is knowing that you don't know it all helpful? connected with the ego yeah we don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> keeps us working on ourselves keeps us working on ourselves i'm just repeating what i hear do we like humble people yes yeah, why yeah. why why do we like them simple Positive vibration, positive What is that about, you think? What makes it positive for us? For me, it gives me space. I feel like I'm visible. I feel like I'm, I'm seen. Or... It's just smoother to connect with. What does that indicate about us? Is there any fear involved when someone's not humble? Insecurities? Yeah, our insecurities arise. Mm -hmm. We feel maybe not good enough, or we feel competitive. Like, uh huh. Well, now we could be attacked. Hmm? We, we could feel attacked by something. Or we could feel attacked. Sometimes that's how, you know, non humility looks, <laughs> you know? So we want to keep that in mind. That there's a it's a two way thing going on, you know. The reason why we like, you know, so we want to think about what we consider good qualities, and why we think that way. What is it about them? What what makes us feel safe around people who are generous and patient and humble? 
you know, and kind. So, you know, that's part of why they're good qualities, is it makes the people around them feel Make okay. Secure. I'm sorry? M make me feel secure. Yes, makes us feel secure. At mm -hmm. the very least, not less than. Mm -hmm. Which in our culture, we have a quite a bit of struggle with, you know, or can. And sometimes we cover that up with arrogance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Humility brings up open mindedness to me. Yep. Perhaps there's a sense of trust associated with someone who's humble because they're real and authentic and perhaps you don't have as many pretensions. What about somebody? Yes, I agree. What about someone who is? Super confident. Sometimes it's inspiring to be around them. Yep. Why do we think it's negative? Insecurity. Yeah. I, we I give don't them too So I am a different approach. Of someone is super confident. That often implies to me that they're very young or perhaps inexperienced. Or perhaps very experienced and know exactly what they're doing. Potentially mm -hmm. dangerous too. See, see, you're going all towards the negative. So I just want to, and I'm only emphasizing this because, yes, false confidence is, can be dangerous. But there's nothing wrong with confidence in having your in your skills. We need that. Every time we get in the car, we should feel a little confident. If we don't feel confident about our ability to drive, we shouldn't get in the car. <laughs> I mean, seriously, folks, if you're having, if you're yeah. really angry or distracted, maybe you should wait, you know? So it's not about not having confidence. When you're humble, doesn't mean you don't have confidence. It's just that you have a pretty accurate sense mm -hmm. of, you know, your skills. And also, you know, you learned them from everybody else, that there's nothing that you need to feel prideful about, yes. you know? It's just, you know, what it is. yeah, you just have the opportunities, the conditions, the skill set, perhaps in your intelligence to be able to learn this skill. It has nothing to do with being more than, better than, it just is, you know, just is. So again, we want to look at both sides of these qualities that we like to feel or like to be around people who feel that way and and see what that you know what you know both the give and take of it because all our good qualities first of all almost all of our good qualities de develop when we help others when someone else needs something from us, we're only generous if someone needs our generosity. I mean, there's no other need to be generous. That's why we're generous. We're compassionate when someone else is suffering. You know, we might have great compassion when we try to help someone who's suffering. You know. So, what does that mean about difficulties? It can bring out the best in us. <laughs> yeah, that's one. <laughs> They're less annoying. You're focused on someone else helping them. They're less annoying. Less lessened. Lessened. Yeah. Our suffering is lessened if we're focused outward. True. That's not a lot. Is that a lot of good things? I mean, what, okay. It means, <laughs> deep drum roll. <laughs> it means that difficulties could be, the big could be received as good news. Mm -hmm. It's our opportunity mm -hmm. to be, to, to be, become better people. Mm -hmm wiser people, more helpful, 
more generous, more whatever, you know, that most of what we've really cultivated in life have been around overcoming challenges, you know, facing difficulties, helping others with their difficulties, you know. So we need something about suffering that makes it not horrible. And that's one thing to look at. This is when we're suffering, we can kind of go, oh, okay, what can I do in this situation? I can, first of all, I can think I am not the only one suffering in this way. Mm -hmm. So we can generate our compassion for others. We can also lessen the sense of like how big of a deal it is that I'm suffering by remembering we're hardly the only ones. You know, just give us our little perspective so we can stand back a little and breathe some. You know. Yes, please, I, Anna. It's also helpful. I know in my own case, um, when uh, I'm experiencing this deep grief, I think the generosity to accept other comfort mm -hmm. has helped me. And even though I'm aware that I want to benefit others, but when I just feel I'm just yeah i can accept someone's generous that's the give and take of generosity yes of being of being needed be you know is that when we need help we are giving the the gift of generosity to someone else to be able to help us when we deny everybody around us that opportunity and try to do everything alone on our own, into, I can do it, I can handle it, I da, 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 da. everybody gets misses the chance to help you. And how do y'all feel when you help someone? Achieved. It feels kind of good. You know, at the end of a day when you feel like and you get home and you kind of go, go through all these kind of things you do all day, but then you remember you know, helping someone. And that generally feels pretty good. You know, it's nice to have that opportunity. Yeah. Vanel Tendron, some students are writing their answers in the chat. Oh, well, that's helpful. <laughs> Can you let me, I'll look. Okay, makes us less self-absorbed. I don't know what that was in response to. So please try to, um, I have to get back used to doing, two audiences so um it can they can bring out the best in us all of these comments i don't know when they were so i apologize um you might find it easier like if you raise your hand and cecilia if you let me know thank you okay yes Self-motivated gratitude. I don't. That's all right. Generous. Yep. Um, that still a good thing, even though it's self-generated. You said that. If it's selfish. Sometimes we give with the hope of something in return. I'm sorry. Somebody doesn't Yeah, that just may be mistaken. Yeah, and that's a good point. You know, is sometimes we, in fact, sometimes we get upset because someone's not grateful for the help we've given that was not asked for. <laughs> Familiar? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes what you want to do, is, I mean, that's just information for you to remember that we want to be mindful of the other person we're interacting with because we don't want you know we get you know we don't want to interfere or inter you know i mean so it's just a matter of learning like oh maybe this person really doesn't want that kind of help you know and so then you anonymously anonymously give an offering to the center like here 
<laughs> we're happy for it. <laughs> so, but yeah, but that's true. Um, and the thing about that is, is being able to recognize that it's okay to be wrong. You know, being trying to be generous or helpful and then finding that woo wrong, that's not, that's fine. You know, it's like what Pema Chodron says, fail, fail again, fail better. <laughs> we, just, we want to learn, you know, we kind of take that information in. And then, you know, you know, we really, one of the best ways to make others around us feel safe is not to make them feel guilty about not accepting what you want to give. You know, because sometimes what we want to give is what's convenient for us not for what they need. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we want to fix something, when someone just wants to be able to talk it out, you know, kind of like use you as a sounding board and they really don't want you to fix it. You know, we need to respect that because otherwise we're not empowering them to say, yeah, I think you can fix it yourself. You know, you don't have to say that out loud, but you know what I mean? Okay. <clears throat> So, okay, I always end up somewhere where I wasn't intending to go. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so this is, the Buddha taught that if we want to free ourselves from suffering, we need to cherish others, and we need to remove our ignorance about how we exist. Those are like two wings of the bird to fly to enlightenment. You need both. You know, we need the actions that cherish others, all body, speech, and mind. Just even watching the news and seeing, you know, this horrible news about the train wreck in India and feeling great compassion for all of them and wishing you could go over and help and sending money to, to be of help or, you know, but just even the feeling of, oh, how awful. I wish that hadn't happened. Oh. That's the kind of mind we want to cultivate. We want to feel that way because it is terrible. And it could be us. You know, this is the kind we we know it's terrible because if it was happening to us, we'd be really suffering. We have this shared knowledge with others about tragedies and sorrow and fear and pain. We don't have to guess. We know from experience. And so we want to really get in touch with the community of living beings that we are. You know? Then wisdom. You know, it's like learning what is helpful to someone else, what is comforting to someone else. It's important. You know, we need, to, you know, we want to develop that. We want to be mindful enough and considerate enough of the people around us to actually learn about them so that we can um, be able to be, for, be there for them in the ways that are most helpful for them. So this tradition shares with all the major religions in the world, probably all the minor religions in the world, I just don't know anything about them, you know, other than Buddhism, which is a fairly minor one, um, share this emphasis on how we treat each other, you know, developing compassion, being generous, being kind, being patient, being humble, you know, all those kinds of things, right? One of the big differences in Buddhism is the way we view what that does for us these these developing our positive qualities the first thing is 
that having a positive mind where you're thinking like compassion or love, love is the wish that others are happy, um, that you're patient, that you're um, generous with your time, you know, those kinds of things, that while you're doing that action, it's very difficult for a suffering condition to arise for you. First, because your mind's pointed elsewhere. Okay. So have you ever been like in a, you know, maybe with children or whatever, you're kind of in an emergency situation and you've got to, you know, help and then you stub your toe, but you don't notice it? Why? Because you're really focused on the other person, you know? So in that simple way, we know it's possible to not notice our own stuff if we're directed outwards to someone else. Okay. <clears throat> According to what Buddhism refers to as karma, which is the law of cause and effect, it's different in other traditions. Um, it's not, it doesn't mean exactly the same thing in Hinduism. You know, so it's different, depends. Um, but according to the Buddha, all of our positive actions of body, speech, or mind, that means even our thoughts, place seeds in our mind stream that will ripen later and some of the future as something positive. This means that every flower we enjoy, every beautiful day, everything we taste that we like, every single experience that is positive to us, its root cause was kindness to others, helping others, being generous to others. That our positive actions of body, speech, and mind can have no other result. So that's the good news. It's very good news. <laughs> it is very good news. So if you think Rejoice. you don't get anything right, just think about how many things you've enjoyed in life. You know, all of those things are the result of your good qualities that happened in the past. So, you know, that's yay. Mm -hmm. And before we get cocky, all the things that we suffer from, that we don't like, from the smallest thing of putting a rotten strawberry in your mouth and going, mm -hmm. You know, to great sorrow are the result of our negative actions in the past. So what makes, what does that, you don't have to buy it. I mean, obviously, you know, but what is a consequence of that? If it's true, what's a consequence? that I'm in control and I can change it. Thank you. Who said that? Uh, Cecilia. Oh, thank you, Cecilia. I didn't recognize you from whatever reason. Okay. That we are in control mm -hmm. and we can change things. We have all the power. We don't have all the skills. <laughs> we have all the ability to develop those skills. This is, the Buddha said, all of us, every living being that has a mind, has Buddha nature, has the potential to become completely enlightened, have an experience of existence as just bliss, not tied to this kind of existence of birth, death, mm -hmm sickness, aging, you know, all that lovely stuff. But that we, it is cause and effect. Nobody's doing it to us. In Buddhism, there's no creator God. No, no one's punishing us. It's just cause and effect.
So in order to understand the full Buddhist view, it goes through this, you know, it's this understanding that our positive actions of body, speech, and mind are really important. They're very valuable. We want to be really happy about doing them, and we want to do more of them. You know? Our negative actions, what is the root of our negative actions? Fear, anger, delusion, ignorance, ignorance, mm -hmm. which leads to all those things, mm -hmm. you know? And what are we ignorant about? This is for those in the know. When old Tendron, Elaine oh. wants to talk. Elaine wants to talk. They better, why don't they unmute and just say? They can if they can scream. I may not hear you. Go, Elaine. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn up the volume. Sorry. <laughs> okay, go. I just have a question about karma. Is it possible that you get caught up in other people's karma that has nothing to do with you? No. Okay. <laughs> Did I lower my hand. I'm sorry. I said I'll lower my hand now. Okay. So this is okay. Not that this is a class on karma, but just to kind of review, for, and for those of you who don't know, karma has four elements. Mm -hmm. What are they? This is a test for those of you in the know. Karma is definite. Karma is definite. That means positive actions always have a positive result negative actions always have a negative result mm -hmm. that is definite second it's yours it's yours you cannot experience the result of a cause you did not create mm -hmm. everything you experience you created the cause for it multiplies <laughs> it increases <laughs> and this we can see in a simple way in that have you ever woken up in a bad mood and then you get impatient with someone and then they snap you back and then you get even angrier next time and then the day just gets worse and worse and worse and worse your attitude's bad you know habits get bigger so an action one day and then the next day, and then the next day becomes what? Bad karma. <laughs> if karma, <laughs> maybe you've been generous today, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the next day. That's a habit. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, mm -hmm. so if we develop the habit mm -hmm. of cursing everybody out on the way to work in yeah. our cars, <laughs> guess what? You'll probably curse them all the way home as well, you know, and then you just might carry that attitude into the office or into your home when you get back from work. You know, because it's what, like inertia of the mouth. <laughs> A body in motion stays in motion. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so you just keep on going, you know. What's the last one? It doesn't go to waste. So karma, so actions we've done, unless positive actions can be destroyed by intense anger, negative actions can be purified by regret. Okay, so unless those things occur, and there's more to it than just that, but we will experience the results of all the causes we've created. It may take a few countless eons, in fact, it'll take more than that because we'll be creating new karma all the time. You know, da, 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 da. So what does that bring up another Buddhist view? On this, keep check on your karma. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Question. Yes, please. So can your karma affect others? We in our, we're not. This is a real big issue in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. We think of ourselves as this individual independent you know kind of solid thing right this is me is that true no no what what how do we know that's not really true because that affects other people our attitude 
And not only that, mm -hmm. did you learn to speak all by yourself? No, no. Our parents and other family. Did you? Family. Did you? Pretty much. I mean, basically everything we know and know how to do, we learned. Yeah. Guess what that means? We're incredibly dependent on others. Mm -hmm. All the clothes we wear. Yes. Which mine are weird, but you know. I mean, the fabric here made in India, you know, sewn by the little hands of nuns in India. You know? And monks. So we are interdependent. That doesn't make us weak. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. Every living being on the planet is dependent on other living beings. Well, so yes, it's not that we experience what others have created the cause for, but we've created the cause for arguments, disagreements, not getting what we want, you know, also getting what we want, you know, all those things. We create the cause to have the kind of relationships we have in families. You know, it's not random in Buddhism, the family you're born to. It's karma. It's a result of your past actions and habits. <clears throat> this is huge. It's a huge view. So it's not something to get all, you know, it's something you want to contemplate from time to time. But it's not something we can just answer because only someone that is free of ignorance, who is omniscient, can know all the inner workings of karma. Because the other big view is that we don't die in the sense of our consciousness, our consciousnesses, all of our minds never end. We're just born life after life after life after life after life after life. After life with a continuum of consciousness that continues. So there are no new people. There are no new minds. Even physicists are starting to look at this. Consciousness as a force. But we change bodies because these bodies die. They cease to function more every day. Yes, Luciana. Question. You said earlier that People are suffering. Any suffering we're experiencing now is the result of something that we have done to create that suffering. So, is it this life that, that we did it, or is it another life where we've done those things? Or it's it's, it's, it can be eons ago. So, for me, that creates guilt. Well, that's too bad because you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> like, do you remember? Do you remember, like, being a soldier and, in, in, you know, I don't know, in the, I don't know, I was thinking Brave, Braveheart, you know? <laughs> I must have seen that movie at some, you know, one of those ages that you remember it. So, you know, no. So, yeah, we, no, it's just in everybody on the planet experiences suffering, don't they? Guess what? It means every person on the planet has done negative actions. Go ahead. But isn't some, some suffering because of how we're thinking about things? We add suffering to what ripens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't just have, you know, the suffering that comes day to day. Mm -hmm. Think again about driving your car and cursing everybody in the car. Who's creating that suffering? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do we like to think? It was them. It was them. They're bad drivers. <laughs> bad drivers are causing my suffering. Not the fact that I'm sitting there getting mad. You know? So yes, we also create suffering in the, in the moment. Sort of repeatedly. You know? And that's, you know, that kind of suffering is such a strong habit that we can get rid of pretty quickly if we just start paying attention. Why am I feeling, you know, why am I cursing everybody out? Is that going to make it better? Is it making me go faster? Is it going to make, you know, is it going to feel good? No. 
okay, so maybe I'll, you know, what I used to do is I made up good stories about people. <gasps> They're rushing to the hospital to get to see their newborn baby, you know, just in order to shift the energy. Yeah. Yeah. And also suffering, like the, I thought the Buddhist uh, realization about aging and death, you know, seeing that only that's the palace, like the human condition. Is, is that karma or is that oh, just being finite that is aging and death? It's part of the whole picture. Samsara, this is another big view, cyclic existence, this idea that we're born, die, born, die, born. We can stop that. That's what a Buddha doesn't go through that. He can demonstrate it to us, like the historical Buddha demonstrate it. But if we remove our ignorance, which would mean we'd remove all our negativities and we're, and we're, you know, we wouldn't live like this. We're creating this cycle of birth, death, aging. You know, we have, I mean, good grief. We're all terminally ill that's that's the way it is yuck you know the buddha said it, it's not necessary now is it easy to change no because we have lots of habits and we've had them forever so to work on these habits so you have so the buddha created the cause in his life the historical buddha to um be able to learn from his experiences you know? so he saw because he was protected this is the story you know that the the buddha was a prince before he became enlightened and he was protected in the in his palace and you know and never saw illness never saw death never saw you know his parents made a a, a point of that because, or his father made a point of that because a spiritual person had told him that he's either going to be a great king or he's going to be a great spiritual master. And, and the father said, oh, he's got to be a king. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't see any suffering rather than become a spiritual seeker. So, eh, you know, but the, the prince, you know, climbed over a fence and saw all those things out in the world. And we went, well, that's not good enough. You know, that's what life's about, that we get old, we get sick and we die, you know, yuck. So he became, he started a quest to see if there was a way to end suffering. So, which is a good story to tell on Sagadawa, since we're celebrating the birth, enlightenment and parinirvana, which just means, parinirvana just means the nirvana, the peace of, of a Buddha, you know, the final piece of a Buddha. But I mean, Buddhas are always in peace. So it's it's uh, it's just for, you know, because we saw this Buddha die, the historical Buddha. I didn't see him personally. Yes. <laughs> My question is off the topic, but related to spirituality. I don't, I really don't want to go there. Okay. We don't have much time. So. But I will tender on Justina has a question. Mm -hmm. It's on the chat. It's on the chat. Shifting the energy of being mad at a driver. When we do this, does that stop the negative karmic seed in its tracks? No, you've already placed some seeds from the, you know, the negative energy that was there, but now you're placing positive seeds. You know, now if you regret the negativity right away, that makes the seeds very light, mm -hmm. you know, so they're not going to have a big result. Okay. So it definitely is worthwhile to shift the energy. Not only will you feel better right away, if nothing else, you'll laugh at the stories you create about people, you know, because it's, you know, I have to really reach for it. Some people just can just become a relaxed driver, you know, I'm not one of them. So did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I had okay. to take the. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. All right. Someone have their hand up? Okay. All right. So, according to the Buddha, we have there's rebirth. 
That's life after life after life after life. We can stop that life after life after life. We do not cease to exist. Our consciousness exists. And it's a, it's a mind of bliss because we have no worries, no fears, no suffering. You know, we just experience existence. It's a blissful state. We, we don't know that because our existence is not like that. So, so that rebirth is one of the big things. Karma, cause and effect is a big, a big thing. Cherishing others, that developing our good qualities that take care of others is a big thing. And then ignorance is a big thing. So developing our wisdom, removing our ignorance is the other piece of the puzzle. No, it's only a two piece puzzle. <laughs> Don't comment. Okay, so. This is when you hear sometimes, I don't know if y'all have been exposed to any kind of Buddhism, but if, you know, you might have heard phrases like no cell or emptiness or I don't know. I can't think of any other phrases. I'm, I'm not well versed in all the traditions of Buddhism. So what the Buddha said was that we mistake how we exist. We think we exist in some sort of concrete way. We know we change from day to day. Our bodies certainly tell us, you know, and then eventually we die. But we have a certain sense of a permanent self, that there's an I that is us, you know? And the Buddha said, no, that's not true. We're constantly changing. If you tried to point to the I, you wouldn't find any I. You could point to your body. You can say, oh, well, I have thoughts, so I have a mind. But you can't. There's no unchanging self. We're just a series of mental events happening in this, this particular body during this life that's changing constantly. You know, even our bodies, you know, if you look at a molecular level, nothing is standing still, everything's moving. And according to the scientist, you know, there's a lot more non-human about our bodies than human. There are other creatures, like 500 trillion or something, I mean, like an unbelievable number. <laughs> so, you know, constantly changing. But we think that there's something that, that is almost separate. You know, here's tendron, <laughs> the essence of tendron, you know, and it doesn't really change. It changes some. But overall, it's just we get to know ourselves better. So it's not really, you know, but we really hold on to that. And we think everybody else has that too. And not only that, we think our cups have it. You know, we, the Buddha said, is we project onto persons and objects, form. an inherent existence that is not there. We think that, that this cup screams cup. It, there's a cupness about this cup and that's why we call it cup. And the Buddha said that's made up. And this I that we think is so precious, we made that up too. It's not that we don't exist, we do exist. We don't exist in that way. We don't exist in some unchanging essence of tender. Yeah. So that means if you die, it's gonna be like death, like not coming back? Your consciousness comes. Okay. But tender is not gonna continue. Okay. I won't even remember tender. Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I have ignorance. I'm sorry, I just pulled. I have a bad arm, shoulder, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, so when I grimace, it's because I moved the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So. I have a question. Yes, please. Oh, you, you know. No, I didn't have the question. I could see you directly. Oh, with your oh you're just helping me um, out. Yeah. I think someone mentioned this earlier about acts of service and how to take care of it, other beings, other creatures, how focusing that energy outward lessens our focus on our own. Stop. suffering so i guess 
the concern was, as I felt the same way, how do you do that without ignoring yourself? Yep. Mm. Is mm -hmm. it, I guess, coming to the realization that there is no self? Is that that's part of the deal? Kind of like that what helps you not ignore yourself, realizing that there is no self. Yeah, I mean, okay, I mean. Self, cherishing others does not say don't take care of the self. You know, we have to have self-care. In order to take care of others, we need enough sleep, we need food, we need energy, you know, we need all sorts of things. So it's not about no self-care, okay? We exist. The, I just listened to a, a, a meditation on emptiness the other day. And the leader of it was saying, the wonderful thing about meditating on emptiness, which is emptiness of this inherently existent self, this fixed, tangible self, is it's, it can bring the relief of carrying a burden. You know, this need to protect that self because that self doesn't exist. Like, You know, like, I don't know, it's hard to, it's the extreme, it's that ability to not worry about being killed, because you know, your mind will continue, all that's being killed is this body, and you'll get another one. And so you just don't worry, you know, you're just not concerned. You're more concerned, about, you know, like if someone, I don't know, His Holiness used to say, if, if you know, somebody tried to attack him in a dark house. <laughs> Because people always ask those kind of questions. What if somebody's coming after you in a dark alley? You know, he first he'd say run, but then he, you know, he'd say, would he ever kill someone else in order to save his own life? And he said, he really couldn't think of one unless he was the last person alive who knew the Dharma and who could teach it to others. That would be the only reason he could think of. And he can't really even imagine that. You know, so this, and this is that confidence, His Holiness has the confidence, they will just be reborn. That that's the bigger deal is you don't want to create the cause of killing someone. See, if someone kills you, you just kind of exhaust some negative karma you created in the past, you know, the cause to be murdered. The person who murders has just started that cycle. Yeah. So it's a really different view. It isn't that there is no self at all. It's just that we hold to this, this self that has to be protected, taken care of, the has to get what it wants. It has to, you know, that the only way to be happy is to is cater to the self. And not just to the self, but also everything you consider in that circle of mine, my children, you know. My, but, you know, when push comes to shove, we'll often choose ourselves over our children. I don't care if you want to do that. We're having this. <laughs> We're doing this. Yeah, we, it's not, and that's fine because, and get to that another time. But the point is that our distorted sense of the self, thinking that there is some thing that has to be protected in this life or it's gone forever mm -hmm. is false. Mm -hmm. And it's from that falseness that we always feel like we have to defend ourselves, that we have to one up people, that we have to be right, that we have to get what we want now, preferably, you know, that we have to, you know, that we have to really earn a lot of money so that we can get everything that we want to, or to protect ourselves so that if the economy falls, we're, you know, whatever. I mean, all the different ways in which we feel like there's this thing that has to be protected guard it, taking care of, we guard our heart, you know, we keep people out because we somehow think, you know, they're dangerous. Instead of recognizing keeping our heart open is the only way to have love and caring. And, you know, you have to keep it open. Yeah, you're going to get hurt. Sure, absolutely. If you get it closed, do you not get hurt? No, we still get hurt. Might as well keep it open and have a chance to connect. You know? So it's this. Um, so that's the important aspect 
of wisdom. Because if once, the Buddha said is once we uproot wisdom, when we no longer have this false view, all our negative habits will just stop because the foundation of it all is this misunderstanding of how we exist. And that's, that's the main topic of this class in the next couple of months. So it's try to have them I work with that. I got very confused about the schedule today. Yeah, sorry. Um, the plan is to end it around 12 and start the puja at 12.15. Because the teachings are pretty much, but <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, I don't understand that at all. But anyway, so I'm over time as not surprising. Um, uh, so that's just a taste of what's happening. Okay. Also, it says something like we have 45 minutes for the puja. Very yeah, unlikely. Yeah. Okay. There's some Sorry. Um. <laughs> Hi, Penny. <laughs> okay. So. So since I didn't start with prayers at the beginning, because the mandala just threw me off entirely. Um, and I thought that's enough ritual for everybody, but, um, but mostly just me, because you know, it's all about me. But, um, okay. So what we wanna do is think a moment to just think about, you know, oh, yay. I told myself I was gonna show up to this class. I did show up to this class. You know, it was worthless, it was worthwhile, it was whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You followed through on some intention, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to do is try to create an, a good intention for whatever you're going to do next. If you're staying around for the Shakyamuni Buddha Puja, don't worry, there's lots of merit there. You know, you almost don't even have to have an intention except the wish that it benefit others. So what you want to try on our small scale, we always want to try to think whenever we're finishing an activity, we want it to rejoice in whatever things that we think will have, have some benefit others. Like if we benefit our mind, that's probably going to benefit the people around us later in the day, you know. And then we also want to think about, okay, what am I doing next? How can I get my mind in the right place for the next thing? You know, how can I be open to whatever it is, open to the people who were there? How can I bring my best self to that? You know, and so sometimes that's, I need to go eat something because I'm hungry. And if I don't eat, then I'll get mad at someone later. So, you know, all of it, we need to know ourselves and we need to do what we need to do to take care of ourselves within reason, you know? Not, 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 you don't go into the restaurant and say, I'm sorry, you can't serve anybody else because I'm really hungry and I should be served first. <laughs> That's not within reason, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> good luck with that, yeah. Um, so, wanna think about that. And we, um, we like to practice having grand ideas. Do we have time to do a prayer yeah. at all? Okay, yeah. let's do the, the um, uh, what are we doing? 244, 246. One of those two. Am I supposed to be able to show this up? I usually have someone else show it up, so I know. 246. Yeah, but usually I have a helper. Once again, we need volunteers. Zoom hosts are needed. People from home, Zoom hosts are needed. It's not the Zoom hosts. The Zoom hosts doing great. Do you have a prayer book open on your computer no i'm sorry i was surprised also okay yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> last minute volunteer again, we need volunteers in person <laughs> um, all yeah, or just i need to know that's all i'm sorry i'm looking for the prayer book for myself I and know, for I'm others sorry too. I, we could, yeah. Yeah, yeah well oh well let's complain um no because she's trying to i've got to show it to other there, people so. okay and then what page was it? 246.
You got it? Everybody can see it? Yes. Okay. So just think all the good stuff that you've done today, maybe all the good stuff you've ever done, all the good stuff that all enlightened beings have done but since beginningless time, you know, we're dedicating it so that these can happen. May all beings everywhere, plagued by sufferings of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of my merits. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvests. May all medicines be effective and wholesome prayers bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their ailments. Whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other. For as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. And then, um, 244. no, that's, we need, yeah, 244, but there'll be an, one that y'all don't have. So sorry about that. Oh, I know. I wanted to print those out. Too. Okay. So we start with His Holiness's prayer. And I don't know that, okay. Savior of the Snowlands teachings and be this, I have a different version, I apologize. Um, you clarify the path that unifies emptiness and compassion. Lotus holder Tenzin Gatsu, may all your wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. In the snowy mountain paradise, you're the source of all happiness and good. Powerful Tenzin Gyatso, Chenrezig, Chen please remain until samsara ends. Tenzin Gyatso is uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's Dharma name. And then we're going to say a prayer for the swift return of Lama Zopa Rinpoche because he's passed away. And that's the head of our whole um, organization. <clears throat> Peerless teacher and assembly of the children of the victorious ones, Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas, victorious Lozan, fathers and sons, along with the lineage masters, all the objects of refuge of infinite lands, please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now, holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teachings. Through explanation and practice, you wore the armor of patience that is never discouraged. Incomparable venerable guru, to you I make request. While striving single pointedly for the sake of the victorious one's teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge. And for mother living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through the undeceiving truth of the blessings of the ocean of the three jewels and the great waves of Bodhicitta, of the children of the victorious ones, may the smile of a reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for fortunate disciples. Holiness wrote that for Thomas Obelimpiche. So, okay. Thanks. Thanks for participating. Thanks for having questions. Thanks for being engaged. It's been wonderful.